We're going to look at the TerraStation web access feature that comes built into TerraStations and LinkStations. This is the new 2.0 firmware, uh, and we'll be covering how to configure your web access settings, how the users and groups work with the shares that you have active, as well as what you're going to have to forward in your firewall in order to do this. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have users and or groups configured. So hop into the users area. I've created a user read and a user read write, which we'll be using for the demonstration today. I've also, I haven't created any groups. Um, if you had a lot of users you could, and you knew some of them were just going to be used for read, some were going to be read write, you could set those up to save yourself some time to add groups later into your shares. So the way we do this is hop then into folder setup. So I'm going to hop in here and you'll notice I have share, share one, and share two available. So in these you'll no also notice I have web access enabled. I'm going to hop into share one and we'll go over some of these settings. If you already have a share you can enable web access with it. If you haven't, if you don't have any shares yet then you can enable it upon creating a share. So all you have to do is check the web access button that you want this share to be available via web access. You could have some shares that are not at all available in web access and some that are available um, to all to the world publicly um, or some that are restricted. So in this one, I have this share set up to allow anonymous. Now this is important. Allow Anonymous is making it a public share. Anybody in the world can go to buffalonass.com, figure out uh, typing random characters or however they want to access that share. If they were to find your Buffalo Nass host name that you when you create your web access, they'll be able to hop in there and anything that has Allow Anonymous they can download uh, or upload to that Terra station. So Allow Anonymous is uh, you got to be very careful with what gets put on that. If you allow anonymous, anything is now available to the public. So we can also set this to all users and groups. What this is doing is it's a quick and fast way to make it to where you don't have any restriction other on anybody that is already allowed in your Terra station. So any users and groups you made, you want everybody to have full access to it. Just say allow all users and groups. Now this is no longer a public, publicly accessible share, but those that are already in your terror station, it's going to add everybody as read-write. Then the third option is to inherit folder permissions, and in this one, we would hop down to access restrictions and enable it. Now, if you already have it enabled, then obviously you don't have to go back into this and re-enable it. Um, just take a look at what you have set for your users and groups. Make sure it is the way that you want it. In this case, for this share, I'm going to go ahead and make this allow anonymous so we can see how that works, and I will disable my access restrictions. I am going to go into share one, and in share one, I will set this so that way we have only access uh, for the user read to be able to read. They cannot write. Uh, it will not allow anonymous connections to even see that this is a share available. And read write has full read write access to this. So I have read with read, read write. I am inheriting the folder permissions. And we can move on to share two. Share two, I only want the user read write to have permission to be able to use this. No other users have permission to this directory. So when read write logs in, they will now they will be able to see share because it's available to the public, share one because they have read and write access to this one, as well as share two as they have read write access. The user read when I log in will see share and share one and the public will see only share. So I'm going to go ahead and close that window as well. Then we go into web access which is near the bottom. Now this is going to be disabled and it won't enable until after we configure it. So we're going to go here and we're going to configure it. Now you have to hit the edit button. I'm not going to enable HTTPS or SSL. Uh, you can if you want to encrypt the traffic as it's being uploaded and downloaded then you would want to enable HTTPS. Um, so it's simple as just as simple as saying enable. I'm going to go ahead and disable that right now. BuffaloNAS.com registration. 
buffalonas.com is a forwarding service. So when we enable this, you can type the name of your terror station as I've done. You can rename it. You can put uh, my terror station two. However, these names are unique and can uh, to each individual owner. So if somebody else in the world has signed up for buffalonas.com with my terror station two, then this name won't be available. Uh, you'll have to find a name that is available. So in this case, I'm going to use TS5200D120. And you can do a, a unique key. You can just randomly generate one or create your own key. I am going to use, um, by default, it has it set up to use automatic router setup. Uh, I'm going to actually disable that because what we can do is set this external port. This is the port that your router is going to listen for that the Buffalo NAS will forward to. So when BuffaloNAS.com goes on, uh, receives somebody asking for TS5200D120, it's going to send them to my WAN IP address, or if I'm on a LAN, it will notice that and reroute to my LAN address. And then it's going to use the port of 9000 by default. However, I can set that to be 8080. Now my firewall, internal firewall, is going to be looking, uh, setting sending it and redirecting to port 9000. So I can show you how to do that. You could set this to 9000 as well. So I could have this external port 9000. Um, in this case I'll use 8080, but I'll forward it to port 9000, which is what the Terra station is going to be listening on. So we could have an exclusive session, uh, which is it will hold an exclusive session for 30 minutes. Um, or unlimited should use it just as it sounds uh, an exclusive session one user logged in uh, it, until that user is logged out another user won't be able to log in then we just want to say okay as soon as we say okay it's going to register your device to buffalonas.com which we'll do now now while this is configuring I am going to hop to buffalonas.com which looks like this it has web access and your buffalo uh, buffalonas.com name. So here is where I entered the TS5200D120. I'll keep that there. And here is where we're going to, uh, is my firewall. And I'll be enabling web access, which is listening on port, uh, my firewall is listening on port 8080. And it's going to send it to my terror station listening on port 9000, which is this local IP. So when this has finally registered my name, which it's done now, I will be able to go up here to the status and select this, and I will have my IP address. I have my Terra station set on DHCP. If you know the static IP address, which I would recommend doing, if you're going to be using this web access feature, likely you'll want this to always have the same IP address, so that way you don't have to adjust your firewall every time it adjusts itself. Um, in this case, I'm setting this up for demonstration, so I'm going to use 192.168.1.132. Click back on there to remove that, and you want to enter that into your firewall. So here's where my firewall is, listening on port 80, rerouting it to port 9000 internally. Then we have to select the button to start the web access service. It will be off. Simply click the button. It will be blue when it is turned on and now we're listening and available. We can now go to Buffalo Web Access, which is buffalonas.com, and hit connect. It's rerouting me, you'll notice, to my IP. It noticed I was on, a, on my LAN, so it didn't have to reroute me through the WAN. So now this is the LAN IP address. It's loading up the web access. We are anonymous, as I haven't logged in, which is at the top right. So we have only share available. So if I double click down into share or use the folder system on the left side which is a standard looking folder system um, you'll notice I can click through and I have all of my files available I can select a file and choose to download it or you can double click on the file and it will download it as it would uh, anywhere else and open it with your default opener or you can save the file so I can drill down in here and hop into multiple subdirectories um, we can also upload using this feature, and we can download. So I am going to log in as the user read. 
read write just read notice here it is logged me into the system so now I have available from my root share and share one I do not have write access to share so I can't do anything with these files um, in and look for a couple files we can upload comparison and now I've uploaded so being as this was just share where I had full anonymous access I can upload a file in share one we can try this file cannot be written to. So even though I can click on it, I can try, I do not have read and write access with this account, therefore I cannot write a file. You can upload multiple files, you can download multiple files by holding the shift key, uh, I believe, and hitting the download button, which is going to RAR or zip those files. See I have a zip file here, which we can open, and inside my directories is share and share one the two files that I had selected using the control key so now that I have those available I'm gonna log out and I'll log in using the read write account this is the third account that I had Firefox having some issue there we go we use log in let's read write and I now have access to all three shares to which I gave access share one share two and the original anonymous share so my anonymous share is here again I can download and upload to share because it is fully anonymous I have share one which I also have read write access to and I have share two, which I again have read and write access to. So I can click on upload. I'll select a file and upload it. And now because I have rewrite access, I am able to. If I hit on share one, again this account has read and write access. Upload the CPU matrix. And now the file is available. So any users to which I give access to this directory will be able to upload and download or download should they only have read access. The last thing you can do is if you know the IP address for your WAN IP, so I could type uh, what is my IP and Google will gladly tell me or you can go to one of the various websites. Because this is a forwarding service, it's really just forwarding to your WAN IP from buffalonas.com. So I can go to here and use the 8080 port that I had previously set as my external port it will forward it on my firewall now to 9000 internally which you don't have to which the user doesn't have to know because my firewall is doing that translation and now this is available on the web so any user on the web that knows the IP address or knows the port configuration will be able to use that so if I were to type uh, read write the password then I could log in here and there we have it we have our performance tests and shares available so back in the configuration if I were to disable my web access here, which I will do now, the web access is no longer available. Communication error, the server is no longer running. We can go into Buffalo web access settings and readjust our settings. I can change my key, I can adjust my ports. You'll notice it's back to de it's a lot of it's back to defaults. Um, I can adjust all of my settings in here and reinitialize Buffalo Web Access. So that is the demonstration. If you need any help, just type it in the comments.